If you like sriracha or Tabasco hot sauce, the process of taking fresh peppers and turning it into one of your favorites is surprisingly easy to do at home. Join me today as I show you how I make fermented hot sauce. Hi, I'm Gardner Scott. And what makes sriracha and Tabasco hot sauces different than a lot of hot sauces on the market is that they're made with fermented chili peppers. The process of fermentation is incredibly easy. All we do is take a pepper and a brine, just salt and water, put them together, wait a period of days, and we have fermented chili peppers. That's what I'll show you how to do. And then to turn it into hot sauce, there's a few extra steps. I'll be using chili peppers that I harvested from my garden, both red and green. For my red pepper sauce, I'll be using a combination of Anaheim peppers, some red jalapenos, and a whole bunch of cayenne peppers. And I grew these specifically to make a hot pepper sauce. For a green sauce, I'll be using green jalapenos and the green Anaheims. I went ahead and mixed up my brine so it's ready to go. And all I'll need to do is add it to the peppers. This brine is the key to successful fermentation. Salt and salty water is usually enough to kill quite a number of bacteria. But the bacteria that causes the fermentation of these peppers is lactobacillus, and it thrives in a salty environment. So by adding this brine to these peppers, we're killing off a lot of the bad bacteria and encouraging that good bacteria. The other thing we'll be doing is limiting the amount of oxygen that reaches these peppers during fermentation because the lactobacillus doesn't like oxygen. As that bacteria feeds on the sugars that are in these peppers, it creates lactic acid. That lactic acid lowers the pH, creating an acidic environment. That not only will change the flavor of these peppers, but it also acts as a preservation method so that the fermented peppers can last a long time. To create the brine, I measured the salt and the water by weight. The brine that we'll be using should be between 3% and 5% salt. The best way to determine that ratio is by weight. If you weigh out 1,000 grams of water, you'll be adding between 30 and 50 grams of salt. In the US, you'll see a lot of recommendations for fermentation where you take a quart of water and add three tablespoons of salt. That's just over a 5% solution. I recommend that you use canning and pickling salt to make your brine. This type of salt has a very small grain, so it dissolves very quickly in water. That's why I like to use it. Now, because we're measuring by weight, you can use any type of salt. I wouldn't recommend using table salt because most table salts have iodine added, and that iodine can affect the flavor and the color of the finished product. I'll do my fermenting in these quart jars. And I'll discuss these more in just a little bit. I'll be wearing vinyl gloves as I cut these peppers. The jalapenos and the cayenne peppers aren't extremely hot, but there's enough capsaicin in here that if it gets on my fingers, then I touch my eyes or another body part, it could be painful. So all I do now is just cut off the tops. I really don't like having the stems in the jar. They're not going to add any flavor and they can change the color of it as well. I'll cut the peppers into smaller pieces. Now we could put whole peppers in here, but you can actually squeeze more peppers in if you cut them first. 
Now I'm using these three peppers because these are the ones that I grew. The jalapenos will add a nice heat to the sauce and also a pretty good flavor. These cayenne peppers also add some nice heat, but the flavor really isn't there. These Anaheims, while not very hot, do have a lot of flavor. So I'm planning as I mix these three different types of pepper to actually create not only a hot sauce, but a sauce that tastes pretty good. As I've been cutting these peppers and filling this jar, periodically I take a wooden spoon to just push everything down. When we get close to the top, I'll go ahead and put these last peppers in. I don't want to fill it all the way to the top because we're going to be weighing down these peppers and we need some room for the weight to fit in the jar. Now the next step is to add the brine. I'll pour the brine in all the way up to this first ring, the lowest ring of the jar. And then I want to try to work out any air bubbles that might be in here. So I'll use the spoon again and just push the peppers in to try to release as much air as possible. This usually means that I'll need to come back and add a little more brine to bring it up to that first ring. Now, it's important that we keep all of these peppers completely submerged during the entire fermentation process. There's a few ways to do that. I've actually started using this spring from True Leaf Market to hold down anything that I'm fermenting. I'll push the spring into the liquid and the spring comes with a fermentation lid. So we just put the lid on, screw it in place, and that will hold the spring down. The spring has a flat bottom and this flat bottom presses against whatever you're fermenting to hold it underneath the brine. And this fermentation lid actually has little holes at the top of it. This lets out the gases that that lactobacillus creates. If you don't have a way to release the gas, you could run into the risk of this bottle exploding. So having specialty fermentation lids and a way to hold everything down is a good option. I'll show you another way to do it for this second batch where I'll be making the green sauce. With this jar of green peppers filled, now I'll do the same thing as before. Pour in the brine and work out the air bubbles. But for this, I'll be using a different method to weigh down the peppers. So what I'll be using is this glass weight specifically designed for fermentation. The flat side of this weight will hold all the peppers in place. I usually push it down. There might be a little bit of overflow. It's actually not bad at all. So I'll take this type of fermentation lid to seal it. This top nipple has a little slit in it. So it works the same way as this other type of lid. It's a way for the gas to escape, but it doesn't allow oxygen in. I'll just place this on top and then using just a normal band that you would use for canning, I'll screw it so we get a good seal. Now, both of these jars are ready to go and the fermentation process has actually begun. If you don't have these specialty lids, you can still do this the same way. You'll cut up the peppers, put the brine in, weigh down the peppers, 
And then you can either loosely fit a canning jar lid and every day loosen it to let the gas escape. Or you could just cover it with a dish cloth so that the gas can escape. So I like these specialty lids, but they're not required. So I'll go ahead and put these in a corner, fill a couple more jars, and I'll come back to you in a couple days. In a few days, you'll notice that the liquid begins to look cloudy. This is perfectly normal. The bacteria is just beginning to multiply and take over the liquid. And then you'll start seeing the development of the bubbles, the carbon dioxide bubbles that are forming in the liquid. They'll naturally escape, but you can shake or tap the jar just to see what it looks like. Temperature plays a big role in how long it takes for the peppers to ferment. At typical indoor temperatures, around 70 degrees Fahrenheit, you can expect that most of the fermentation will be complete in about a week. If it's substantially colder than that, like my indoor temperatures in winter, around 65 degrees Fahrenheit, it might take about two weeks for the fermentation to be complete. With substantially higher temperatures, it's not unusual for it to just take a few days. I've allowed these peppers to ferment for that two week period, and at that point, they're ready to turn into hot sauce. But if you're looking for extra flavor, go ahead and leave them in the brine. Because even though the fermentation is complete and the liquid will begin to get more and more clear, flavors will continue to develop. The McElhaney Tabasco brand sauces, some of those will stay in barrels for years. These that I'll actually start preparing today have been sitting for just over a month, and I'm expecting some good complex flavors to develop. That's not a problem because the lactic acid that is created as part of the fermentation creates an acidic environment. As long as we're below 4.6, there's no reason to worry about this going bad or about it harming us. And at 3.3 pH, I'm happy with this batch. You don't have to get a pH meter to test the pH for each of your batches. In fact, I've been fermenting for years and this is actually the first time that I've checked the pH using a meter because I thought it would be fun to see the results. And for instance, this batch right here, well, this also is at 3.3 pH. So I'm very happy with that. There are a few things to consider when you're making the hot sauce itself. In addition to the pH and how long it's been fermenting, you have to decide whether you're going to use vinegar or not. And so I'll be doing this in three different methods, two with vinegar and one without, to show you just exactly how to make a variety of hot sauces. For this first batch, I'm going to make it in the style of a Louisiana hot sauce. I'm gonna go ahead and pour this through a wire mesh strainer to get most of the brine out. And then I'll go ahead and take my trusty food processor and put the solids of the peppers into this. And I'll go ahead and start processing these peppers. With this well blended, I put it on the food processor for a couple minutes. I'll go ahead and pour it through another strainer just to get the liquid that I'll be using for the hot sauce. And we need to let this drip down. We can help mash it to speed up the process. But it's okay to go ahead and taste it at this point. Anytime you're cooking, I think it's a great idea to go ahead and taste what you're making. So, a quick taste. Oh wow, that's good. It's hot, it's spicy, 
It's got a great flavor. And also the brine, taste this. Wow. Don't discard the brine. You can use this as a flavoring in your cooking. And what's left behind after all of this drains through, I'll actually show another video of how you can use this and make some delicious spice rubs and some powders that you might want to use in your cooking as well. For now, we're just going to give it some time so that all of these liquids will drain out of all of these solids. It'll take a while for the liquid to drain through all of that pepper mash. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the second batch while that first batch is draining. Now, remember I said go ahead and taste it along the way. Well, the first brine has a wonderful flavor. I'd say it's a little bit fruity, almost like peaches. But the second one, this is the batch with mostly cayenne peppers. It's good, but it doesn't have that same flavor. Still some fruitiness. I'd say this is a little more like a citrus flavor. So you can see how blending the peppers will give you different flavors when you make your hot sauce. I'll go ahead and start this the same way. I'm going to go ahead and drain off the brine. I'll go ahead and mix these brines at this point and just get the solids. And then I'm going to put the solids into a pot. Now, two of the batches I'll be making today will not have any changes to the fermentation process. They're actually going to continue to develop complexities. One of the ways to freeze the flavor of your hot sauce is to heat it up to cook it and add vinegar. By doing that, you'll kill all of the bacteria and you can have a shelf stable hot sauce. If you don't heat it up and kill the bacteria, they're still alive. And this is still a probiotic sauce. It will continue to develop as those bacteria live. You can slow down the process by putting the sauces that have the active bacteria into the refrigerator, but they will continue to change flavor over time. To this pot of fermented peppers, I'm going to add one cup of white vinegar. And so now I have the heat turned on to begin warming this up. I want to bring it up just about to the boiling point, and then I'm going to let it simmer for a while. I have an immersion blender, so while it's heating, I'm going to go ahead and start grinding this into little pieces. It's come up to a boil now, and so I'll let this simmer for another 15 minutes. That will kill off any remaining bacteria and allow this sauce to be self-stable. Might as well taste it with the vinegar added. That's tasty. It's really hot. Remember, that's the cayenne blend. Really hot, but really tasty. I've turned the heat off and that second batch is now cooling. Let's go ahead and get to this third way to make hot sauce. And this is the easiest way of all. The other two are Louisiana type of hot sauces. They have that vinegar in it. But if you don't like that vinegar flavor, just go ahead and take your peppers and take your brine. And we're going to put all of this into our food processor. The addition of vinegar when making hot sauce is really just for flavor. It might lower the pH a little bit, but the fermentation process lowers the pH enough to make it safe to use. I went ahead and measured the pH on these jalapeno peppers, and it scored a 3.5 pH, so that's ideal. By taking the peppers and the brine, and that's all, I can make a delicious sauce that's totally different from the Louisiana hot sauce you might be used to. The other sauces are strained to remove most of the solids. 
I don't want that with this sauce. I want this sauce to be exactly the way it is, chunky. It has all that jalapeno flavor, and it's going to be ideal to use as a condiment, especially for something like tacos. Let's go ahead and give it a taste. Mm. Really good. Just a very slight saltiness, even with all of that brine. It has a mild heat, because the jalapenos were mildly hot. But it's really nice all by itself, without the addition of vinegar. So this is a keeper. It does have all of the seeds, so if you don't like seeds in your sauce, you might want to remove them before fermenting. Now let's get back and finish the first batch of hot sauce. After sitting in this mesh strainer for a couple hours, I'm left with almost exactly a cup of hot sauce that has no seeds or skins in it. Now, this by itself is delicious, and you could just stop right here. But because we want to make a Louisiana-style hot sauce, we're adding the vinegar. I'm going to start with 50% of the sauce. So, one cup of sauce, half a cup of vinegar. And then we'll go ahead and blend this together. How much vinegar you actually use really depends on the flavor you're after. And the more vinegar you use, the thinner the sauce is going to be. It's pretty watery right now, but there's still some good chili pepper solids in it. So let's give it a taste test. And I think that's good. For me, that half a cup of vinegar is ideal. And the pH is currently 3.1 for this batch of hot sauce. And now let's get back to batch number two. After cooling off and draining through that strainer for about two hours, I'm left with almost exactly one cup of the hot sauce. Quick check of the pH. And this one is coming in right at 3.0. Now, because I cooked this with the vinegar, it has that vinegar flavor. I'm not going to add any more. And so by not adding any more, this is actually going to end up being slightly thicker than batch number one that has the extra vinegar. The last step now is to bottle. Now, you can go ahead and save your old bottles of hot sauce and fill them up with your own hot sauce. That's the way I've done it for a long time. But now that I'm making a lot more hot sauce, I went ahead and bought some bottles that are specifically designed. They have little caps to put on the top so you can just put it out one drop at a time. And it's really a faster and easier way to do it. Just take your funnel along with your hot sauce. Quick stir is all that you need. And then start filling up the bottles. I'm going to go ahead and label this now so I know not only when I made it, but what kind of hot sauce it is. And there's enough here to last a long time, so I'm going to give quite a bit of it away. Three different methods, and if you actually choose to use the brine to zip up some of your meals, go ahead and bottle that too as a fourth method. If you're interested in what I'm planning to do with this mash, well, go ahead and watch this video next. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening and preserving your harvest. <music>